So what do you say we get started? Just top of the hour, everybody ready, good to go? I see John May is on a plane, sitting in the middle. John, I don't expect you to talk to us. Are you at 35,000 feet? Good man, glad to do this. Uh, so today's enablement session was a request. Uh, Dave you know, Wellesley asked me to do a presentation and go through the pres the deck that I built and we did. Sean, I think, saw it when I did it in, uh, uh, in Gartner in Vegas. And this is a presentation that I've been building over the last several months with the intent of it being an educational and informative presentation to talk to people about you know, at GitLab, we go really fast. Let me tell you how we go fast and why we go fast. And and the intent of this discussion or presentation really is one in which I, I try to set up, and I'm, I'm trying to set up a, a thought leadership kind of discussion where we help people to understand what we do and how we do it without being a tool pitch, of it being somewhat educational and somewhat open and transparent about where we are and who we are and where we're going. So I've, I've put speaker notes into this deck. So if you were to want to use it, you could. Uh, and I'm just going to step through it. I'm not going to do the full presentation like I typically would, but I'm going to walk through it and, and sort of give you the overview of it. Uh, I, I start out with this idea that digital is fast and digital really means digital transformation means moving faster. And, and I talk a little bit about that to try to make sure I'm consistent with what the audience's expectation is, that they see that as the same way. Uh, Mark Andreessen's quote where he had a tweet storm and he talked about this point that cycle time compression is key. And, and what he really did is he was talking about this analogy between auto manufacturers and traditional manufacturing where you're releasing a product over a long period of time. Compare, and he compared that to software as a service. And in a SaaS business, software as a service, you can release every day. You could release as fast as you possibly can. And he, he really went into describing how he saw that as a, being a huge competitive advantage. Uh, and, and the reference to where it is is listed here. But the background is, is that, and I think the point is fast. And, and if, if fast is an advantage and moving fast is the objective in a digital transformation, then you want to learn and we, we want to be able to help people understand how you do that because at GitLab, we move pretty darn fast. Uh, and I have two examples of how we move fast, and they're, they're different examples, but one is GitLab.com, our website, we're pushing almost 70 updates to it every single day. Now that includes the handbook. I mean, there's more to it than just the website, but the point is we're moving really fast on, on updating and moving that forward and improving it. Similarly, our product, GitLab, is moving crazy fast as well. 89 consecutive months, and I update this slide every time I do it, we've, we've pushed a major release, a significant release for 89 consecutive months. In addition to what we ship all the time as far as updates to our web, to our, to our SaaS service, but our packaged software goes every, you know, every month on the 22nd of the month like clockwork. So how do we do that? And, and what are the keys to doing that? And that, that sets this up to how do we go from being the slow locomotive to being this high-speed train that's moving fast? And, and really the key that I try to drive towards is it's people, it's process, and it's tools. And it's the tools that help us to do it. And it's, it gets at really trying to remove these elements, whether it's you know, friction that's introduced from the silos, from the way people work, from the, the lack of visibility to make decisions. Uh, you know, the, the way we used to think about QA is responsible for testing and we would throw it over the wall and wait for QA to do their thing or we'd wait for security to, to do the work. You know, the, the ticket mindset that's often in organizations. And so to double click into this, really, it, it gets into uh, the first observation that we do at GitLab is we've eliminated silos. We, we have eliminated silos across the organization. We do it internally and we do it externally. And the silos are really what cause problems. I mean, think about the game and the speaker's notes, I talk about the game of telephone and how it, you can get things so wrong when you play the game of telephone as a child. Well, in many organizations, they, they still do that today, except they, they try to write it down and they sign off and they, they, they have all sorts of processes to play the game of telephone. At GitLab, we don't do that. At GitLab, we share and we collaborate in ways that are remarkable. For me, this is a screenshot of one of the most remarkable collaborations I've, I've seen in a long time. Adam Roberts, I'm gonna meet Adam one of these days. I haven't tried to find him yet, but he's gonna show up at one of these presentations. 
Adam Roberts discovered an issue where we were working on value stream management. He discovered it on Google. He, they took the time to register and contribute and share his input as to how he thinks we should do value stream management, specifically suggesting a feature of cumulative flow diagrams, which then led the product team and the engineering team to look at that and factor in cumulative flow diagrams into our roadmap. Amazing. It's amazing because we broke down the barrier, the silo between us and our prospective customers to drive us going forward. And, these, and so this is the extreme of it, but I think the reality is breaking the silos down across the organization is key. And furthermore, when we think about it internally, here's a release board for the plan team for planning a release of how they were collaborating in a visual way to share and work together about you know, tracking the work and, and getting their release out and what's gonna be in the release and how they're gonna close the, close the gaps to deliver what they're gonna deliver for this specific release. So if silos are the first thing, that's important in changing the way you work. I think this next one often gets a chuckle, right? Often I get people, they will see this and they will chuckle a little bit when they see this. And the point though is after they get done chuckling is the point is that the ostrich versus the hummingbird, which one's more agile, which one's more nimble, which one's more responsive to what happens in its environment. And obviously it's the hummingbird, right? The hummingbird is amazingly fast. And, and, and the reality is, is that when you think about shipping software and you think about delivering software, larger changes with lots of process and bureaucracy to test it and make sure it's right, to prove it's right, and have lots of plans and rigor around them are almost always fraught with problems and risk and challenges of trying to back them out. And, and we've learned that smaller is better. Now, Eric Rice wrote Lean Startup and talked about minimum viable product, which is cool. A product's a hell of a lot of things to build before you even get feedback. And at GitLab, because we've embraced minimum viable change, we're moving so much faster. We've reduced the impact of, of, what, go, of what could possibly go wrong while we increase the speed of, of getting feedback. And so the faster we get feedback, the faster we can react and respond to what happens in the market and we can learn faster. That's the key. The key is get it out, make it better, and learn. And that's what we embrace and that's what we do. And that has unlocked the, our ability to move even faster. You know, graphically, it, a lot of times this is a view that I think helps to resonate is that if you build based on what you think is the right thing, but you have it wrong, you don't know, or the right thing might have changed because the market changed, how do you respond to that if you get to the destination you've built the wrong thing? And I, I guarantee you, if you ask IT leaders and executives and anybody who's been doing this for a while, ask them how many times have they delivered a product or a project only to realize they built the wrong thing. I guarantee you, you will have half the audience nodding. They will nod in agreement because they will smile and they will remember the last project they did that on. And it was probably pretty recent. This is a very common problem that we're talking about is how do you make small steps moving in the right direction and then constantly adjusting. Now, Velocity without quality is a, is a real problem. And just going fast and shipping crappy code and crappy solutions is not what anyone wants. Frankly, that scares most senior leaders to death. The point of this is that it's not speed without quality. It's actually speed with quality and with security. You don't have to sacrifice quality or compliance or security to go fast. The pipeline is the key. And this is one of the things that we do really well we build into our pipelines a key to moving faster and to going faster without risk. For example, you know, when we do auto DevOps and we think about what does a default pipeline look like, we build a pipeline that has quality and testing built into it with security built into it, a pipeline that takes us not just through testing, but then all the way to production. And, and an example of this then would be you know, here's an example from the product team where, where we were looking at the enterprise edition and a release where they had over a hundred different tests running in their pipeline, where they're doing automated testing and security scans, planning their configuration so they can go test in an environment. This is a key activity that goes into what we do. And it's one of these things that we, I, I always come back and I harp on the fact that it's, it's security is an incremental part. It's a core, it's central to DevOps. I mean, they call, a lot of people call it security, you know, DevSecOps, DevOps security is in the center of DevOps, so to speak. 
And for us, we think of that the same way and we build it in so that way in our pipelines when it runs, we get immediate feedback about security to make sure that we're not introducing new problems or new changes. Now, the key is, is however you do this, however an organization does this, they have to understand that security cannot be left out till the end. It has to be an integral part of whatever they do and that's what we do here as well. And so, so then I go on and, and the, the next part of it really is about how do you go faster and solve the other real organizational challenges, which is operations and environments and waiting for infrastructure and waiting for things to be ready. You know, too often there's a ticket and you, you have teams that queue up and wait for test environments and wait to make sure the environments are configured correctly. And in fact, if you look at a lot of studies of what are the sources of defects or problems that people encounter, you know, Oftentimes, one of the most common sources of defects and bugs isn't the software, it's the configuration. And this is why infrastructure is code and the idea of being able to streamline deploying environments and deploy an environment in a container using Kubernetes in the cloud is incredibly powerful because that allows us and allows a team to quickly deploy an application to con to configure that application consistently, not only for testing, but when they deploy to production. And, and an example of how we do this is we use review applications all the time to quickly deploy and get feedback. Additionally, you know, because we're embracing infrastructure as code, we can quickly scale up and scale down. You know, we can deploy with you know, canary releases or AB releases and AB testing, et cetera, we can go faster. Now, the, the final point, and I, I, I left this for the end because I, I, want to, I always want to end on this note. I'd either start on this note or end on this note in any presentation I do about DevOps and increasing velocity. It's about continuous improvement. You know, the journey that we're talking about organizations embark on is one that there is not an obvious destination, but there is an obvious start. And the start is about the commitment to improving the velocity and the speed and the quality of what they're delivering. Once they're on that journey and they're looking about how do they remove waste and how do they go faster, you know, they're going to land in something that looks a hell of a lot like what we think of as modern day DevOps. Exactly how they get there, you know, it'll be a journey for each one of them as to where their pain points are and where they can, and how they can influence the change. But the em embarking on continuous improvement and rapid feedback is a key, and that's something we do here incredibly well. We do live retrospectives on YouTube. We get together all the time to look for and gather that feedback to learn from our last releases. And in addition to that, because we, we learn and we're learning together, we document those changes. We document those lessons learned in ways that we can harness and leverage together. You know, our handbook serves as a single source of truth for us in the way we work and the way we collaborate and work together. And so we, I talk a little bit about the handbook and then I share that. And then, then in wrapping up this whole thing, I come back to the key points, right? And, and, and close on this. The, the, this is a presentation that then the, the last data points really is that, you know, our humble start of being a source code management solution, being a best, the best source code management solution as a, as a team that we tried to build and started building seven years ago, we've evolved and iterated. And when we realized the larger market was the DevOps tool chain, the entire tool chain, the velocity at which we've delivered, is, this is an illustration of how fast we move and how fast we're moving, you know, as a proof point of where we're going. And then, then, you know, the only marketing slide I really have in the deck is this one here, which is, you want to know more about GitLab? This is what the GitLab, the product does and where we're going and why we think there's power of GitLab. And that's the presentation. So, feedback. Can you use this? This is yours to use. Uh, this is a presentation I continue to use and, and I'm continuing to use at events in different places. Uh, the thing I like about this presentation, or I think that really resonates, is one, this is always a work in progress. This is a, a presentation that reflects you know, what we think are keys to our success. And as we go forward, I think this will continue to evolve as we learn together. Uh, and so that's one of the ways I always put that together. And I present, whenever I present it, I present this as a work in progress and is just an, a form of open transparency and sharing. Uh, 